So, in this lecture, we are going to be talking about capacitors. I'm going to try something different in the sense I'm going to use the full edition of OneNote available to me courtesy of the Stevens Institute of Technology from this lecture on. So hopefully we should not have any problems with the PDF generation. So we will, we're going to continue uh, with our discussion uh, of the fundamental circuit elements. So continue our discussion of fundamental circuit elements. By in this lecture, we are essentially going to talk only about the capacitor. I say only because the capacitor and inductor inductors are duals of each other. As you get familiar with duality throughout the book, you will see that you need to only mentally reflect on the capacitor circuit behavior. So in other words, duality implies, again, I apologize for the poor quality of writing on the tablet. In the good old days, that is around like 10, 11 years ago, uh, when I was a faculty at when a visiting faculty at UC Berkeley, we used to have tablets with a um, what is called as a gorilla glass screen, where on which you, the writing is just like amazing. But the problem with gorilla glass, as you may know, is that it's very heavy. So anyway, uh, so duality means you mentally reflect, or we mentally reflect on uh, the capacitor. circuit behavior here which implies we can derive the inductor circuit behavior and vice versa okay probably the easiest way to understand this is and we apologize again for this since i posted this on the forums but the hard copy of the book was supposed to be published in a two column format uh and it, and it, it hasn't been and again we apologize for it but the good news is if you go to the uh, springer homepage for the book we do have a sample chapter online chapter one and if you download it and open it you will see that if you go to section 1.93, this is how the section is supposed to be. So it should be in this two column format. And what I mean by duality is, for example, when you say in this relation, uh, if you look at the capacitor relation, you have I is C as a function of V times DV dt. Again, you will see throughout the book that the essence of duality is if you replace I by its dual variable, which is the voltage to get the corresponding dual expression. For instance, to go from this equation, 1.51 to 1.43, we simply replace I with V, V with I, V with I, and that's it. Uh, so again, we'll revisit this throughout the book, but the bottom line is I'm going to be only talking about the capacitor column, and it'll be helpful if you can download the uh, sample version, the sample chapter online, and use that to study section 1.93 instead of what is in the hard copy of the book. Okay, so the definition of a capacitor, so let's look at that first. So number one is the definition is that uh, the circuit symbol actually for a capacitor is looks like this. An arc. Sometimes the arc is not drawn. Okay. So basically, a capacitor, nonlinear capacitor, establishes the relation between charge and voltage. Now, if this is a if this is a function of charge, the capacitor is supposed to be charge controlled. And if it's a function of voltage, 
it is supposed to be voltage controlled so simple enough the second point is the idea of a small signal capacitance that is consider now for speci for specificity consider a voltage controlled capacitor now if we differentiate both sides let's add a page uh, there is lecture 5 and hopefully I'll be able to combine these pages very easily <laughs> we'll find out um, let's see so assuming Q of V is differentiable we get dQ dt which is by the chain rule dQ dV times dV dt in other words on the left hand side we have I is C as a some function of V times dV dt and C of V is which is defined to be d Q hat dV is the small signal capacitance. Now consider, suppose a capacitor is linear and time invariant. That is, suppose a capacitor is linear and time invariant. Now, first point is linearity, which is a very important topic. Uh, again, the book talks about nonlinear circuits, but we got to understand what is the difference between linear and nonlinear in the context of circuits. So, this is actually discussed in exercise 1.9 in this chapter now time invariance is unfortunately I mean a detailed discussion of this is beyond the scope of this book but in essence we are saying that if you go back if you assume that the input um, to a charge control capacitor which is charge is shifted by a particular um, so this is a Q is a function of T if it's, if it's shifted in time we if the voltage the output is also shifted by the same amount of time then we say that the system is or in this case our capacitor is time invariant same goes for voltage controlled if the input is which is voltage is shifted in time uh, by some amount tau and the output which is charge gets shifted by the same amount tau then we say the corresponding capacitor is time invariant uh, but basically if you are saying that a capacitor is linear and time invariant this implies that Q is a constant C times V okay so I want to box this and number this as one because as you will see it's very important or in other words uh, v is 1 over C times Q okay so if this is true then we have therefore one implies that our small signal capacitance C V which is the derivative of C times V with respect to V that C of V is a constant C therefore you have I is C dV dt which is the classic IV relationship for a capacitor but you have to understand that uh, but it is very important to understand that one 
Q as a function of V, Q equals CV, is the defining relationship for a nonlinear for a capacitor, not two. In other words, you can plot, for example, in the VQ plane. the relationship for a linear capacitor you cannot do so for equation two and it's pretty obvious why you can't do it for equation two in the sense uh, this it depends on what v is as a function of time to actually be able to plot the iv relationship for a capacitor and recall our idea of modeling so this again all goes back to uh, the idea of modeling from sections 1.71 and 1.8 okay so you could say that I mean if we're talking about from basic physics we have to understand that the measurement of the common circuit variables of for measurement are current and voltage so the measurement uh, for a linear time invariant capacitor yields this relationship however the defining relation is not this okay that's property two and for the rest of the properties uh, we will assume that uh, we are talking about linear time invariant capacitors so for rest of the properties below assume linear time invariant capacitors and we'll discuss nonlinear capacitors further in chapter 4 so the third property is the so called memory property that is we can rewrite equation 2 as v of t in the integral form it's infinity to t i of tau d tau for some t greater than or equal to some t naught okay in other words, we basically you think about connecting a current source I of t. That is, this implies that we are connecting a current source I of t in series with a linear time invariant capacitor. See, note the special symbol. We don't draw the uh, rectangle with the um, shaded rectangle at the bottom. Uh, but anyway, basically you're saying the capacitor voltage can be obtained by integrating uh, the current flowing through the capacitor. So in other words, the capacitor voltage, capacitor voltage V of T depends on past history of I which implies memory now let's go let's go further and assume that suppose uh, V at T equals T0 is V of T is given right This implies we can rewrite the equation like so. That is V of T is V of T naught plus 1 over C. You can start from T naught. In other words, the effect of um, from negative infinity to T naught is incorporated here. Effect of conditions from T turning to minus infinity to t naught is in there so you can write this as t naught to t 
oops i of tau d tau t greater than equal to t naught so in other words instead of specifying the entire past history we need to only specify v of t at some conveniently chosen initial time t naught in effect what we are doing is in, if you want to draw a circuit picture you have i of t plus or minus v c and you have v of t equals t naught this is equivalent to saying that you have a capacitor v1 with voltage across it given by v1 of t this is still the same i uh, and, but then uh, so if you say v1 of t0 is 0 that's because the effect of that is, in other words, V of T is equal to V naught. This V naught here is, in essence, incorporate, incorporated in this independent voltage source. And the voltage across the capacitor is now the voltage across terminals AB. Okay? And the final property, which I believe is property number four, yes, is the so called continuity. property uh, that if you apply a current source described by a discontinuity that is assume that this current source here has some discontinuity for example a discontinuous square wave then I mean the voltage across the capacitor is still given by this equation okay uh, so let's call this equation 3 now, so assuming I of T uh, across a capacitor, so again we will, oh, I don't want to say across, the current always flows through I of T through a capacitor, so again don't forget the picture, here is I, here is C, I of T, and then we are measuring this voltage here, through a capacitor, is whoops is described by a discontinuous for example square wave uh, the voltage across the capacitor uh, so 3 would imply that V of T so we're going to assume that V of T naught equals zero volts for simplicity because the point is this integral is going to smooth out. Uh, so it's going to smooth out the voltage that is for Oh, smooth out the current that is vc of t minus is vc of t plus for any t between ta and tb whoops let's write this for any t between ta and tb okay uh, the proof of this is so important that it's actually proved in the text and it's very easy to prove this by considering an interval uh, between t naught uh, but uh, between t uh, considering interval t and t plus delta t okay so if you basically uh, go through the math it's in the book I'll just highlight it. So, basically, if you do this, then we know that, I mean, practical signals, uh, practical current signals are bounded. We can bound this by an M. Uh, we can bound the current waveform by a value M. So it implies this integral is in essence m dt, but dt as dt goes to zero, m dt is zero. In other words, vc of t plus dt is vc of t. Okay, therefore vc of t is continuous at t equals t, which is essentially what this is saying. 
Okay, so to recap, we defined in this lecture what is a capacitor. We talked about small signal capacitance, and then we talked about the memory property and the continuity property. So again, uh, please use the online sample chapter and understand the dual relationship for the inductor. Okay. And next time, what we're going to talk about is memristors. All right, I will see you then.